Hey YouTube, back again, Brian Phillips here. Just working on this bridge. The other day we were down here working on these approaches and uh, we had freezing conditions. So I was able to work and as you can see where it's wet, it's kind of thawing out good. We've got a nice high point here. It's not perfect, but it's good enough to kind of get started with. And then as things thaw, get a couple of good rains and I can let this stuff dry back out and then I'll come back and work it some more. But the, the big thing is to get high points for the approach onto the, the decking. So these this point here is, is high and rolled to the sides. And then that point, there was kind of a, uh, a little bit of an edge, a curb, if you will. And you can kind of see it. It went from here and it kind of kept going all the way down to this area. And this bank, I just cut the top of it to make a, a pass through so I don't have such a steep bump. And I need a little bit more work on that. I, I probably need to take another six inches right off of this top and bring that down and put it in this spot here. And then the water will shed on either side of the, the road. But then as you can see, I've got this two by 10, 16 footer here. I got it cupped for the tree. I built, I cut a little saddle into that. That was a, a bit of a fiasco. Um, don't use your kid's compass because I broke it. <laughs> and I had to use drill bits and I broke two of those, which is awesome. But I just couldn't quite get the, the saw to make the bend, which I should have known better. So here's the other two by 10, 16 footer. And this one's not, they're not screwed down yet, but I like the way they worked out. And of course this approach is also built up. You can see where it kind of changes color a little bit there. We got a nice, nice high point here. It kind of very, it kind of goes over to here. I need to get a little bit more material in this spot here, but I've got this high point cut off and then flattened out. I need to go out a little bit further and pull that out and bring it up to this spot. And then this tree stump is going to be a bear cat because we'll be working around that for years. And I cannot get that out with my normal equipment with my John Deere 1025R. It's just way too big. I hit two or three different stumps here. There was one over there. And then I don't think I hit one here. I might have hit a few up there, small ones. And then over here I had another big one. And then I was able to get those out. I used the forks as a ripper which you're not supposed to use as a ripper, but it worked perfectly for what I was doing since everything was froze up good. So about the top six inches was held together tight and then everything else was easy to work. But as you can see, we're right more or less flush with the, uh, with the surface now. Let's take you up here. You can see I've kind of got a, this tree here is taking some damage as I've gone back and forth, but like I said, it's gonna go bye-bye. It's got the knot on it and so does this one. That's a cherry tree, so that knot will will kill the tree. I could probably pull the tree out in a year or so, just from the ground. So I'm gonna just wait till they get run over, and then they'll go bye bye. Because I really like them. I just dis disappointed they're gonna die. So that'll become the main thoroughfare here. Is is probably where those trees are will go bye bye, and then this will be the the thoroughfare. So then this tree, I may have to. I may have to take it, but I'm going to leave it as long as I can just because it comes up here and it, the rollover protection system likes to cut, cut this corner here every once in a while. So I think I can probably save the tree, but I'll have to take it here. I don't know that I really want to take it at all, but we'll see. Plus I've got another tree right next to it that I like. So, but as we come in here, we've got a little bit of a low point here. I need to get that built up. So my next step is to start zipping these things down with some screws. I believe I'm just doing a two and a half inch screw and uh, not anything fancy. We're not using spacks on the side here. But the whole idea was I had so much deviation in where the boards ended up because of the natural shape of the log, which is also why the spacks don't go in a straight line like they would on a dimensional lumbered bridge. These ones went fairly straight, but you can see where it zigzagged. That's where I had I had different uh, shimming under there. And then of course the middle was nice and mostly straight, but I still had to try to hit the crown of the, the log. That was a bit of a disappointment. And then one other disappointment, I don't know if you guys picked up on it yet, but we had this, this board split and that was just a, that was a screw up on my part. I didn't have support under this corner and I don't know why I didn't think to stick something under there in time, but it actually kind of worked out nicely because 
the angle of the split was about perfect for the angle of the approach here. So I'm not super put off by it. I'll come over here and give you guys another view of it. But it just kind of did its thing where it needed to break naturally. And now I've got good support under it. And then uh, basically I've been able to just kind of backfill right up to this lip for the approach. And like I said, over time, as we have a, a couple more freeze and thaw process um, go through here, like I said, I got to work this area here, but there's roots from this little tree here. Uh, so I'd, I'd like to try to salvage as many of these trees as I can, but I got to make the path work. And as you can see, we have thousands of trees. So, and we're going to be planting another hundred or so at least in the spring. So this little area here, we've got this all cleaned out nicely so that the bigger trees are going to be able to receive this a little bit better sunlight and hopefully take off and grow. And then some of these, you know, 30 footers, they'll take over for the 70 or 80 footers or whatever these things are, 60, 70 footers as they die off or, you know, get bugs or whatever it is that kills them. And then like over here, we've got, this is an oak tree, so it's gonna be a several hundred year old tree. So the only thing about it is the erosion's undermining under, underneath it. So, but anyway, just a couple things to, to show you today. Um, I need to try to get that bridge out because as soon as I get these, these I'm calling them curbs, mounted, I've only just got a, a couple of spots to get a little bit more drainage. Um, I, the drainage is good here, but I want to backfill that a little bit better. Uh, so it's underneath and, and just helping to support that area. And then my hope is I can bring in the, the tires, especially of a small trailer if I was dragging a trailer, and I can hit that spot and then go straight across the bridge. And you can kind of see the traffic pattern right now, the way I make my turn. So from where it's dirty. So my hope is this is gonna actually give me just a little bit more working area, even though I'm gonna try to you know, stay off of the curb as much as possible. I'll have that just a few extra inches of, uh, of width. And basically everything is, is at this point somewhat irregular. So I'm just kind of having to eyeball it. So it's a little bit challenging um, in that when you eyeball things, sometimes they're not exactly right, but I'm gonna do my best. So anyway, without further ado, I'm going to pre-drill and I'm going to start screwing these in. I'm just going to work my way from this end all the way down because that end's a high point. If I pull that down, it's going to want to lift the whole board. If I start down here, I'm going to be able to hopefully walk down this low point and then follow up to the, to the high point. Now I'm going to have to probably stand on that while I drill it and that'll suck that part down. And then this side is, is a, quite a little bit straighter because the tree on this log and this log was way straighter. So I think I'm gonna have less trouble with it. Plus that saddle looks really nice. I was happy with the way that turned out. Um, and I don't know if I talked to you guys about this, but when I designed this bridge, my spacing for the main logs were actually the wheelbase of my pickup truck. But my pickup truck is, is significantly heavier than my tractor. Um, probably about three to four times as heavy. So would the bridge support it? If my wheels were right over the logs, I think it would, but I'm still not really super excited about trying it. Plus I have to get the, get the truck through openings like this, or, you know, if I took out this tree and then took this hillside and make a, made a road here, I could do that. But then I have to get down the side of the hill and it's just gonna be a mess. So I don't really anticipate doing that. Plus my 16 foot trailer, uh, that well, it's technically not mine, it's my dad's, but the trailer that he lets me use all the time. Uh, that trailer is uh, like 108 inches wide on the wheels. So it is just a little bit too wide to hit, hit this bridge straight on, which was a super bummer, but what are you gonna do? There are always gonna be limits on things like this. And if I ever decide to make this bridge bigger, my plan would be to probably take out this tree and then basically just build another small bridge here right next to it. And uh, then you would have two different places to hit your wheels and you just split the gap. Or I'll take this curve out and interlace it. But that's what I got so far, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll show you a quick update when we're done with the, with the curves. And maybe I'll try to do a little bit of this backfill here today while we've got relatively decent weather. It's, it's significantly warmer than it was the other night when I was working in the dark. And uh, the video quality was really poor that night because it was just so hard to see on the camera. It was easy for me to see with the lighting, but uh, anyway. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Hope this is giving you a, a chuckle. 
or a good idea so you can try to do it yourself but just keep in mind logs don't last forever neither does treated lumber but treated lumber is at least designed to be outside and the dead logs are you know once they fall fall down there's there's no guarantees so i hope i get seven eight nine years out of this thing if i'm lucky and i i really do believe i'll get that that type of life out of it and if i don't at some point i may just build forms across this and then you know put a bunch of rebar in and do a proper foundation on either side and then i'll just pour concrete across there but i'm not sure if i want to do that yet so we'll wait and see thanks for watching guys a little bit more coming later today all right guys brian phillips here again just uh, wanted to give you a quick video showing how things turned out today um as you can see the curbs are both installed got the waterway pretty well straightened up I love listening to that. Got the sun's getting ready to come down. Some of the grading is gonna need some TLC when it warms up a little bit and dries out just a little bit. But I've got that pretty close right now. This stuff comes out of the creek, which is kind of gross, but it just needs to dry out. I gotta burn that stuff, that's garbage. But other than that, and getting rid of this and I don't know, I'll probably take out these handrail things. They're just PVC. But this thing, i got to wait until I have a warmer day, and then I can get the tractor down here without making a huge mess. You can see the approaches are all done. I'll actually take you down here so you can see it from down below. As you can see, it's muddy, really muddy. You can see we got that board to attach down even though it's a 2 by 10 it's got a nice wave in it and basically what that's doing is just keeping all the boards tamed so that if one moves it's got to move like seven or eight different connection points and this was a big part of the reason why I did this was to keep this really cool looking opening here And this is the one this is the one waterway that runs on the one side of our property. There's another one on the other side of the property that runs similar to this. It's probably twice the flow rate. And it actually belongs to the neighbors, but we enjoy the tree line that it's in. And it's a little bit bigger culvert under the road. But this one and the other one feed the named creek in the back. So I'm going to get this one out here in the next few days probably. Oh, it's just got stakes down into the dirt and screws holding into the side. This was a really easy way to, to do a simple bridge. I just used material that the builders had left for garbage. You can see here, I've kept and maintained a, a little bit of a berm so that hopefully the water that comes down this hill won't rush down onto the bridge but i may have to move that out just a little bit further and then we bring up the grade a little bit onto the bridge this is the stuff that's really pretty wet right now so i gotta be careful but you can see it's uh just worked down just a little bit and i'm not a really good machine operator i just barely know anything about it you can see I've got kind of a low point here. I need to get that built up, so. Be happy with the way it turned out. This is pretty dry over here at least, because it's a high point. And then I've got more stuff to clear on this side. And once we get the tractor over, I can start clearing that and getting it neat. The stuff that we're clearing is really nasty stuff. And I don't know if I can find one that's closer to the base, but Basically what we've been trying to do is clear the stuff out and it is just vicious. It's got There you go Look at those thorns guys Those thorns they come up and there's one see that green as it goes up I'll try 
and make sure that focus is good. It comes up like this. Come on, camera focus. Sorry, guys. Yeah, it's, I can't get this stupid thing to focus. But then after a little bit, it reaches out, and the next thing you know, the spikes, or the thorns, spread out. There you go, finally. And they'll spread out to where they're far enough that you can get a hold of them but then once they get down by the ground it's like really really crazy and then that's actually a grapevine there so we've been trying to clear that stuff and it's just really challenging to do that without access to machinery so we'll get this area cleared out and look really nice then we can plant some bushes of our choosing and that's where the house is you can see how those logs are. That one's actually the smallest one. And pretty smooth transition. This stuff is a little bit high right now, but that's okay because obviously it's going to pack down some. And uh, works really nice. I've already driven the tractor across several times, and we actually designed this to work for the, the lawnmower initially. And then I realized I'm going to need to have a tractor, so luckily I got all that stuff in time, so I was able to build the extra capacity, and otherwise I probably would have only had two logs. And it might have worked for the tractor, but it sure never would have worked for any trailers. So anyway, that's it, guys. Um, now we can get to the other side, the back half of our property, and we can start doing work over there. And this bridge is going to help make that happen. Hope you enjoyed the project. If you have questions, make sure you leave them in the comments. And uh, we'll leave it at that. Thanks for watching, guys.